the reason it makes me sad is because I'm thinking of the people that are closer. I'm not sad for myself. Hopefully uh, we're gonna be safe and Gallo will still think everything looks good. Getting ready to go pick something up. Like I should at least clean the windshield. Between the rain and the smoke now, Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tara, a farmer from Northern California, and this channel is mainly about farming, but sometimes it's not. So in California right now, we're going through a massive heat wave, two weeks all over 100 degrees. A couple days have been 112, 110. Um, today's supposed to be 104. Well, a couple days ago, we had lightning storms and thunder that started a couple fires. Nothing is extremely close to me. We have no threat right now, but there is a massive fire in the Napa area, and they just got hit by a massive fire last year or two years ago. So my heart is really breaking for them. Um, it, I was not expecting this. I came outside and the sky is like black, unless it's super windy. Um, we don't get affected too bad. Um, so here is my Jeep covered in ash. So I don't know how many miles we are from Napa as the crow flies, but to drive there takes maybe an hour and 20 minutes. So that just shows, I, I mean, my heart is breaking for everyone in that area that's like really being affected. Um, so just say some prayers for Napa area farmers out there. And of course my heart is going out to Iowa. They just dealt with a massive storm and you know, 2020 has been a year for all of us. And unfortunately uh, farmers have had some pretty tough years lately with the environment and mother nature and that that is uh farming and yeah so i'm just gonna be sending out a lot of prayers right now and keep doing what i can do i just can't believe how dark out it is and it just makes me think you know obviously people that are so much closer than us have it way worse so by seeing the sky dark and ash falling, the reason it makes me sad is because I'm thinking of the people that are closer. I'm not sad for myself, I'm sad for them. And it just uh, sucks, man, you know? I've reached out to a few of my friends that live close by. Um, neither of them are on YouTube, but they're on Instagram. My friend Leland, but her and I have met in person. See, Rosebud Heritage Farms, Le my friend Leland who just had a baby, and then my friend Tiffany Wiseacre Farms. They've got like 1,500 to 2,000 chickens. And she actually just called me yesterday to see she's got 250 chicks coming in the mail and she might end up delivering them to me because if the fire gets close, they won't even be delivering anything. So I told her, I, I don't know that my brooder can fit them all, but we're gonna do what we can to help her if we need to, for sure. So I'm just gonna take care of the chickens this morning and then we'll head to the farm and see what's gonna happen. So my old chicken coop is now my storage shed, which is nice. I got this nice bulk food now comes in a 55 gallon barrel and it's uh, 250 pounds of food. Makes life so much easier versus buying 50 pound bags at a time, you know. Okay, just got to the farm. Um, gonna go out and look at the grapes. Like I said, I know uh, 
I know I'm lucky that the fires are not near me. Um, so I don't want it to sound like I'm complaining, but I am a little concerned about the ash getting on the grapes and uh, hopefully my canopy is big enough. So I just want to come out here and see how things are looking. With this being my first harvest, I don't know a whole lot and I don't know how, uh, how this will affect things for me. Like I said, it did rain um, a few days ago and the rain can negatively affect the grapes. Rain will create mildew, which is what I spent all that time dusting for. I dusted once a week for 10 or 11 weeks and that is to prevent mildew. Well, it rained last week and that can cause mildew. It's too late to dust or do anything like that. But my mentor came out and said he felt like things looked really good. I have a really great canopy. So the rain really stayed on the leaves and outside of the grapes. Um, he came basically right after it stopped raining and looked at my bunches of grape. Everything looked okay. So I think that we're, we're safe um, from any rain damage. But hopefully it's the same with the ash. You can see that the ash is really on the leaves, but looking into the grapes, it doesn't look like the grapes really got hit too much. Here's a pretty open one that doesn't have um, as much of a canopy. Little tiny bits of ash there, um, not too bad. And like I said, this one doesn't have that big sweeping canopy where the majority of the grapes do. So hopefully uh, we're gonna be safe and Gallo will still think everything looks good. Gallo did come out yesterday. My rep came out, his manager and a winemaker. So they came out to look at everything. They said it's not quite there yet. Uh, last week we were at 17.6. So I do believe that the sugar has gone up, but he said just the whole thing as a whole isn't quite where they want to see it yet. But he did say that the crop was looking good. So I'm, I'm taking that as a positive note. And we'll just see how it goes with everything that's going on right now in California. I really, I don't think you can really tell on camera, but the sky is just completely gray. When I was driving, you could see a little line, almost like there was a little bit of blue sky and then the top was ash um, or smoke. So, oh man. Lots of ash. I'm sure it's nothing compared to people in Napa. Their leaves are probably completely covered, but everything in here looks good. And that's what's important at the end of the day. So I came in the office really quick and then I'm gonna head back out to the vineyard. But one question I get asked a lot is like, what have been my biggest mistakes that I've made? Well, one thing is in the very beginning, I think I kept a journal on what I did and then I got lazy and basically just stopped recording everything. So in the beginning of 2020, I restarted my journal and I haven't stopped. Um, so my first note is from January 10th. And if I flip back just a couple pages, I have like February 2019. So 2019, I took really bad notes. Um, and this year I have written down everything like calls I did with people and advice they gave me when I sprayed, what did I spray, what I irrigated, when I dissed. I mean, I have recorded as much as I could. So I think a mistake I've made is not having better records from the beginning because if I do ever expand those first couple years, I have a few things in my mind that I know I messed up and I have to do different, um, better weed control from day one. I went in um, with a hedger last year and I just don't think my vines were trained enough for that. So, so there's things like that that really stick with me but I could have made little mistakes that I've already forgotten about, to be honest. So if you're a beginner farmer, or even if you're a seasoned farmer and you don't keep notes, I recommend it. Um, 
and that way I can learn from my own mistakes and hopefully not repeat them. So my dad and I picked up a new piece of equipment the other day. I will show you guys a few clips from uh, when we did that. Getting ready to go pick something up. I'm gonna air up the tires, make sure everything's good. And then we're gonna head out. All right, got a Wilcox Performer. Got our brand new Wilcox Performer. Everything else looks pretty clean. Yeah, we're at a winery vineyard in Lodi. And the guy I think said he bought this like four years ago, used it for two years and it's been sitting for two years. And it's not that he didn't like it, it just wasn't right for their ground. It's really sandy. And I think it's just too heavy for them. So now it's mine. Isn't that right? <laughs> they have really pretty grapes. Look at how pretty these grapes are. They're like. All right, so here it is. We still have it in the carry-all because once we set it down, the best way to move it is with my tractor and my tractor's hooked up to something right now. But I'm pretty excited. I was pretty happy with how the performer did. So the performer I was using last time, I was just borrowing it and testing it out basically. So we were really happy with it. So I'm excited to have one. This one is one size bigger than the one I was using. Actually, the frame and the knives and all that is actually the exact same size. It's just this ring roller in the back is one size bigger. But I called around and my one of my mentors, this is actually the exact one he uses. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. And hopefully now in between my rows will always stay looking nice. Yesterday, my dad and I went and picked up this drag scraper from my uncles. It's 10 feet and I'm gonna use it to smooth out the headlands. My tractor desperately needs a bath. Oh my gosh. Like I should at least clean the windshield. Between the rain and the smoke now, really needs a bath. But anyways, it's nice that my tractor can pull this. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to smooth out the headlands. I started a little bit yesterday just to test it out. That way when the harvester comes out each row, there he's not like hitting a bump or anything like that. So, um, I'm gonna try to get that done and we'll see how it goes. Might as well stay in the tractor because today's supposed to be 104. One thing that's nice is I've got my little ag cam right there from Dakota Micro. And I can see my drag scraper really good on this screen. I haven't had a chance to change it yet, but my goal really is to have the camera up here on the top so that way I get like a better view. Right now it's pretty low, but I had a spot right there that was like really easy to attach, so I just did it. But maybe a winter project, I gotta get a little thing up on the top there and I'll get it hooked up there. But I'm loving it because I was having so much problems having to constantly turn, I was hurting my back, but uh, it was only the beginning. So I'm so happy that I got this camera now because it makes it easy that I can see it right here in my tiny little cab. So yeah, if you guys ever need an ag camera, this is from Dakota Micro and I have been super happy with it. Another cool thing just for YouTube purposes is this actually has a memory card in it. So if I ever want to use footage from that camera for you guys in a YouTube video, I can just pull it out and I can get it in one of my videos.
Okay, I finished up smoothing out the headlands. So I don't know if you can see my lines of where I went with the drag scraper. I think it looks so much better. You can see a nice clean line. Hopefully that won't be too much of a bump there because um, the whole point was for them to be able to drive smoothly, but I do think it looks a lot better than it did before. We're still pretty smoky out. Looks more smoky now than it did before. I'm feeling a little bit better now. I think even though there is ash and smoke, I've got a really big canopy um, right before harvest. We trim everything and then it gets shook. That's how we harvest. We harvest with the machine. It shakes it. So I think, you know, there is ash, but I think we're going to be okay. Um, okay, so my dad's going to harvest alfalfa tomorrow. So we're going to go change the water over so it'll be ready for him to start in the morning. So by opening this up, this is where the water goes to mine. And by opening this, it allows it go, to go back to my dad's alfalfa. All right, now all he has to do in the morning is turn it on. Good to go. All right, well, I think that's all for today. It's a hot one. Hopefully it'll start cooling down. Hopefully the fires will get put out and uh, we'll have a good harvest. If you guys enjoy my channel, remember to hit that subscribe button and that like button. It means so much to me and I will catch you guys later.